Ladies and gentlemen, uh, over the years it's been my pleasure on a number of occasions in a number of different circumstances uh, to welcome to Saskatchewan, politically and otherwise, my great friend Paul Martin. Mr. Martin has over the years proven to be a very loyal friend and supporter of Saskatchewan and the things that matter to the people in this province. Uh, he was, as you know, uh, the uh, single most successful finance minister in Canadian history, and I am very delighted that, uh, that the, uh, the fiscal strength that this country now enjoys is largely a product of his years in that portfolio when he turned around a $42 billion deficit and translated it into a decade of balanced budgets. And this, this year, just about exactly this time, uh, should be a very important anniversary for Canadians because it was about this time in the, in the late summer or the fall of 1998, uh, 10 years ago, when we received the first annual financial report of the Government of Canada in 27 years, audited by the Auditor General that said there was no deficit, the books were balanced, and the country was for the first time in a generation running a surplus. And that is largely the work of Paul Martin in the Chrétien government putting that together. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now facing in this world today some extraordinary economic turbulence. Uh, I've checked with other candidates like Monica and Brian and our other, other candidates here in Regina and they say in the last week or so, as people have watched banks failing in the United States, the credit system drying up, in our American neighbor just across the border. As they've been watching people become increasingly worried about the status of their pensions and their homes and their jobs, uh, that uh, th this, this, this economic contagion that is obviously affecting the United States, the question at the doorstep is how is that going to affect us in Canada? Are we prepared for it? Is this something that we need to worry about? That has become a predominant issue in the last few days of this election campaign. Is Canada in a position today to deal with that problem seeping across the border from the United States or are we somehow now after two and a half years of Harper government left vulnerable? Well I think there's no better person in this country, better position to speak to that issue than the person that beat the deficit, that restored fiscal responsibility to the government of Canada and brought this country to a level of economic and fiscal success rarely ever enjoyed in our history. And it is my pleasure to introduce to all of you our great friend, back to Saskatchewan once again, the Right Honourable Paul Martin. It is very hard for me or for anybody to stand up here in front of you, in front of one of Canada's great finance ministers, one of the one of the people who truly understands what is happening in the world and what has to happen in Canada, that is to say Ralph Goodale, and say I'm going to talk to you about this, about the crisis that we're going through. But let's, let's not kid ourselves. This is very real. What is happening in the United States has spread to Europe, it has spread to Russia, it is now spreading to China, and there is no way that we in Canada are going to be immune from a crisis that is affecting our, our largest market uh, to the south. The fact is that whether, and what, what is fundamental in all of this issue is that the crisis has occurred. Financial shocks have occurred. But we went through those. We've been through other financial shocks, Ralph and I and all of you. When I first became finance minister, it was the Mexican peso crisis. It was followed by the Asian crisis, followed by the Brazilian devaluation, the Russian default, the Argentinian default, all of which shook the world's markets, and we came through it. What is, what is absolutely crucial in this kind of a thing is that, in fact, the government understand what is going on, recognize that it affects real people, and that you simply cannot sit back with some kind of a laissez-faire idea that the thing is going to cure itself. At the present time in Europe, the leaders of Europe are meeting. We have seen what has happened within Congress and in the United States. 
The only country that seems to ignore the waves that are buffeting the world's financial center is the Canadian government led by Stephen Harper, and he is letting the Canadian people down. Two days ago in the debate, two days ago in the debate, Stephen Harper said this is of no concern to Canadians. It's only of a concern to those people who play the stock market. It has nothing to do with Canadians' jobs. It has nothing to do with Canadians' ability to buy homes. Well, let me tell you, Stephen Harper, this does affect Canadians. It does affect their jobs. It does affect their ability to buy homes. And you haven't got the right to turn your back on Canadians the way you're doing now. Ralph gave you the numbers. When Ralph stepped down, he left a $12 billion surplus. Understand why that surplus was so important. It's because we understood that there were shocks. We had lived through them. And we understand that there were shocks, there are shocks, and there are going to be shocks. And the one thing that a government has to do is to make sure that its population it has the ability to react, that its government has the room to maneuver whether it's building our infrastructure, whether it's investing in people in an education, so that a shock that comes by doesn't turn, send you into deficit. Well, what happened to Ralph Goodale's $12 billion surplus? The fact is that within two years, the Conservatives had almost wiped it out. First two quarters of this year, we were in deficit. Most economists say next year we will be in deficit. That is economic mismanagement at its highest. That is economic negligence, and that is what Jim Flaherty and Stephen Harper have given us. And they, heck yeah, you're going to clap, you can. So Stephen Harper has asked, who is the best economic manager? Who can possibly deal with this? Well, I'll tell you who can possibly deal with this. It is a liberal government led by Stéphane Dion with Ralph Goodell right there. That's who can do it. And then, what about the other alternative? Jack Layton. Jack Layton, who has never been in government. Jack Layton has never seen a promise that he wouldn't make that he couldn't keep. The fact is, Jack Layton says, oh, well, I can deal with this. And how am I going to deal with it, says Jack. Well, I'm going to increase corporate taxes, $50 billion. I'm going to go out to all those small and medium-sized businesses who are going to create jobs, who are trying to borrow money in the midst of a credit crunch, who are trying to give people a chance to breathe, all those small businesses. And my answer is to cre increase their taxes by $50 billion. Well, I don't know what planet he's living on, but it sure as heck ain't Earth. Now, that's what this is all about. Jack Layton is not going to save Canadian jobs, but Jack Layton has been Stephen Harper's accomplice from the very beginning. Jack Layton was his accomplice when Stephen Harper destroyed the National Child Care Program. Exactly. Jack Layton was his accomplice when we tried to help Aboriginal Canadians and build up our health care system and our, our educational system. Jack Layton was his accomplice when he took away the, the city's agenda and the ability to invest in infrastructure. I can tell you there is only one job that Stephen Harper is, that, that is going to be saved by Jack Layton, and that is Stephen Harper's job. And I'll tell you something, he's not going to succeed. Liberals are going to win this election. We understand the flight of the Canadian people. That's what this election is all about. It's about individual Canadians. It's about how do we build a better society. And we're going to win on October the 14th. Care to Canada. Thank you so much for sharing your inspiration with us today, for encouraging us to keep up that good fight because we will succeed on October 14th. Ralph Goodell, thank you so much, first for putting this country in such good, great shape, and secondly for continuing to mentor the rest of us here in Saskatchewan here, so here. that we will succeed on October 14th. Thank you.